Hi, on the woodpecker today, I will show you how I did my clamp rack. The reason why I build my clamp rack is obvious. My clamps are all over the place in my shop. On the floor, near my table saw, and even on the wall near my dust collector. I start by measuring the width between my floor joists. When all my measurements are taken, I drew the rack with a 3D software. Then it's time to build it. Everything starts with reclaimed wood. After marking a rough length on each piece, I cut them with an ENSA. Each piece goes through a jointer to straighten one side, then on the other side to have two straight faces. The third face passes through the thickness planner to be straightened and parallel to the other face. The fourth face was cut widthwise on the table saw. Now all the faces on the boards are square at 90 degrees. All those boards now have to be cut to size. After placing the stop at the right spot, I cut one end straight and the other end to length. When all the pieces are cut, it's time for the joinery. I start by cutting all the tenons on my panto router. When all the tenons are cut, I switch to my slot mortising machine. You can purchase the plan for those two machines at woodgears.ca. When all the adjustments are complete to match the tenon, I do the mortises. I ended up with a lot of dust to pick up after. I then mark where all the dowels will go. But before drilling the holes, I have to make a jig to support the pieces at an angle of 5 degrees. This is done by cutting two sides of a 2x4 at 5 degrees. Then the holes are drilled. At the end, I end up with a bunch of 5 degrees holes. Now it's time to mark the top of the pieces. Don't do like I did and screw up this step. I had to repair it later. Now it's time to send all the frills and the pencil marks. Then I rounded the edge of all the pieces with a one quarter round over bit. And finally unsanding all the pieces. This is the time to see how everything looks and to see if all the joinery is okay. This is what the rack will look like. It's time for a gluing strategy. I realize soon that I need weight on my clamps to keep them from falling. When everything looks all right, it's time to glue all the pieces together. To be sure that the frames are square, I clamp one of my corner square to the frame. Now you can see the three frames glued and drying. While the glue is drying, it's time to make the dowels. I look around my shop to find scrap pieces of hardwood that I cut square. Three quarter by three quarter and one inch by one inch. Then each face goes through the router to round the four edges. I ended up with a bunch of round dish dowels. Then all those dowels needed to be cut at the same length. At the end, add a lot of dowels of two different sizes. Then I had to smooth the edge of the dowel. So I built another jig that will support the dowel when I will pass them in the router. I'm cutting a dado in a 2x4 the width of the dowel.
Each dowel went through this jig. Before the glue was all dry, I removed the squeeze out with a chisel. At this point, I prepare for the finish. I prepare a small quantity of shellac. After an obvious mess, I fill up a half pickle jar of dry shellac flakes. I then crush the flakes to help them dissolve easily. I put them back in the jar and fill it to the rim with wood alcohol. After a good stir, I left the flakes dissolved so I can use the shellac later. Now that the glue of the frame is dry, it's time to sand the tip of the mortise flush with the frame. At the end, they look like this. It's time now to mark the placement of the inch mortise. I start by marking the edge of the inch with a marking knife. Then I use the score line to rest my chisel in it and define the edge of the inch mortise. I'm using the inch to find the depth of the mortise. I then remove the wood between the two chisel lines. It's hard to see with my big arm in front of the lens. After I clean the bottom of the mortise with a chisel, because the bit I used left a rough surface. It's time to put the frames one on the other to see if the mortise of all the frames align. Everything fits. It's time to pre-drill the hole for the hinges screw. It's at this time that I realized that my middle-sized clamp wouldn't have any support in the center of the frame, but all the frames were glued. So I had to make floating tenons to have another piece in the middle of the frame. It's just a piece of wood with rounded corner that fit inside two mortises. This was the only way I could fit another piece in the frame after it was all glued. I'm sanding the floating tenon flush with the frame right now. I then make a catch to keep the frame closed. After drilling a hole, which will catch the dowel in the frame, I cut the catch on the bandsa, being careful to cut a bit past the line. I finish by sending it to the line. After that, I round over the edge of the catch on the router. I then mark the placement of the hole for the catch dowel. After I check if it's working, I add vertical support by drilling holes in the frame on the side where there's no hinges. In one of them, I'll put a dowel. I align the hole by using a cone-shaped dowel. which after punching the frame, left a dimple in the wood. Now it's time to glue all the dowels in their holes. The first two frames have one row of dowels, but the last have three. It's at this time that I realized that I made an error marking my hot arrow. So I removed the tenon, turned the piece and put a floating tenon instead. I'm cutting the excess right now. I don't know what happened, but on the last frame, I messed up by hitting the dowels too hard. I went through the back of the piece, and when pushed them back, messed up again. So I repaired this with a lot of glue and clamps. While the glue was drying, I cleaned up the shop. This was overdue. When the glue is dry, I install the rest of the dowels. You can see my repair on the right hand corner. Normally, I don't clean glue squeeze out with water, but this time I do it. I figure it would be too hard to clean if the glue had time to dry. You can see the last frame with all the dowels in it. But now I have to clean my mess. I use chisels and sandpapers to reshape it. Luckily for me it's not fine furniture. It's just for my shop. On the back I just use a power sander to remove the glue. My clamp rack before putting the finish on. The first coat will be a coat of shellac, the same one I prepared a couple of days before. 
After pouring it in another jar through a paint filter, I add some wood alcohol to thin it. Then I pour the shellac in my spray gun. This will seal the wood and give it a nice amber color. After a couple of hours, when the shellac is dry, I sand every surfaces with an abrasive pad. I finish the rack with three coats of clear water base finish. Now, if you're asking yourself why the varnish is pink, it's because I made a mistake buying it. It contained a warm amber finish. After the varnish dries, I drill the holes that will support the rack to the joist. Then, I install the catch because it will be impossible to do when the rack will be in place. Now, it's time to fix it to the wall. When it's level, it's time to drill the joist. I improvise an angle drill to do it. Then it's time for the lag bolts. After comes the hinges. When the two hinges are screwed on the frame, I use the upper one to clamp the second frame while I screw the lower hinge. After doing the same thing to the last frame, the rack is installed. Here you can see on the opposite side of the hinges, the dowel which vertically supports the rack. The catch locks the whole thing. Thanks, and see you next time at the Woodpecker.